Welcome to the Dr. G Show. Uh, so, as you guys uh, get on here, uh, this is uh, episode 98, and we're doing Edible Nature, and we're going to have a guest uh, presenter on here too, live from Australia. So, as um, I'm going to figure this out, so we're going to split the screen, and we're going to have uh, Carrie McDowell on, and uh, I'll figure out how to do this as she comes on here. So, um, she's actually in Australia and Brisbane at the herb, like, um, she'll explain it, in some place where they have all these different uh, plants and different things growing that people can go to and learn about. So, uh, I have a few that I've found um, that we'll talk about too. And, and there's a couple, I'm not even sure what they are, but we're gonna have you guys try to uh, identify those. So, and Gina, hey, good to have you on here, Gina. And yeah, I went to Kansas City to the Jazz Club, uh, and it was phenomenal. The Green Lady Lounge was great. All right, so here's Carrie. So let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Uh huh. She's done work, but I haven't. So we're gonna see if this works. Aha, it worked. Hello. All right, hey, how are you doing? Hi, from Australia. <laughs> Right, mate. Good day. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> now, All right, so I... let me know if you see any crocodiles sneaking up behind me, okay? You, you got to yell out, crikey. <laughs> crikey, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so all I know is like five things that I say all the time, so yeah. more that's... of a jack jackass Americanism. That's all you need to know. That's the whole language in five words. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Okay, hey, Tracy's okay. on here too, and, and Peter, so, now, uh, Carrie, can you see the stuff going across, the yep. people? Yeah, I can see the okay. live writing. Awesome, all right. So, you guys, um, this is Carrie from Australia. Is that how you say it? Australia. <clears throat> Australia. 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 Or you can just say right. Australia. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, she she's a... Uh, Super awesome, and um, she's halfway through uh, chiropractic school. Is that right? That's right. But you've done a ton of different things, and like your whole family is all like chiropractors, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm raised on a farm. We've got a whole family of chiros. We had fruit orchards and veggie patches, and we were away from the shops, so we we didn't go buy things. You had to grow it. So oh, nice. Yeah, learn all about what I could eat off the land and what I could not eat. And I'm just trying to find a good spot. Yeah. So when I, so when I was talking about this, you were very excited because this is kind of like your youth, yeah? This is my area, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I might just stay in here. <laughs> okay. Okay, sorry if I made you all dizzy. Just trying to not have <laughs> people in my background. <laughs> here we go. So, yeah, and you grew up on a 90-acre farm with horses and chickens and all that? Yeah, horses. Um, we had 60 horses. My mum and dad bred Appaloosas. And so we had horses everywhere. We got to watch some live foals being born and um, assist in births, home births. <laughs> oh, my god. That was gosh. pretty cool. Um, yeah, lots of sheep. We didn't have cows. I don't know why. And then we had chickens and... We had to go feed the chickens and the foxes ate the chickens and we didn't have dogs. Um, so I grew up not liking dogs because I was never exposed to dogs. And um, I thought they were filthy, dirty animals. <laughs> but now, since then, I've owned about six dogs since I became an adult and decided dogs were good. <laughs> yeah. You got dingoes out there, yeah? Yes, dingoes. Got to watch out for those. <laughs> There are actually a lot of wild dingoes in Queensland and they mix with wild dogs and so they make this funny breed. Yeah. 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 They eat people's chickens. <laughs> <laughs> well, so last uh, last week we ha we talked about sleep and I still got to answer questions from you guys. Uh, go back through those. Um, I, I wanted to, the reason we were doing this is I actually watched this PBS show years ago, public broadcasting show. And they would take people and then they would put them in the area. So, like, the first episode, uh, first season was about Alaska. And so they had to kind of figure out how to survive on the land, right? Yeah. And that was a hard one because 
I mean, when it's frozen, you're screwed. There's not a whole lot of options there. But the second one they did, the second season they did in Venezuela. And I loved it because all these people were like starving to death because they couldn't find a fruit tree or a monkey to eat. <laughs> and that's all they knew is food. It's just, and so they, it's just this lush environment with all this just edible nature. And they were dying. They were starving in the garden. And I thought that was the funniest thing ever. Yeah. And so that piqued my curiosity too. And I didn't, uh, so as far as, I mean, I grew up city boy. And so we ate lots of dandelions, chicory, and that's kind of it. And I don't think I, I knew anybody else that did that. I just did it. I don't know why. <laughs> I just, I don't even know how I knew how to do it. But I just ate dandelion all the time. Um, <laughs> But that was the extent of like my kind of eating nature. And then me and my girls would make pine needles. We saw in Man vs. Wild, he would um, take pine needles and he'd make tea out of it. And he said, it's full of vitamins and minerals. And so me and my daughter <laughs> started girls. doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bear Grylls, yeah. And then there was another show called Man, uh, Man Woman Wild. And it was Bear Grylls' uh, I think, uh, cohort in the, the first pre preliminary shows. And this guy, you know, Bear Grylls is very much like eat an animal kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, but this guy, with the, he'd go with his wife, who used to be a news anchor, I think, in England. And it was funny because they would do the same thing. They would try to learn how to survive. But he was pulling up cattails and uh, out of the water and grabbing these plants and these plants. And he would come back in like 30 minutes with just an immense amount of groceries. But yeah. it was all vegetarian. Yeah. And so I thought that that blew me away because I go hiking all the time and, you know, I pack my food, but I always think, well, what if? And that to me kind of really stirred this, this uh, curiosity uh, of, well, what could I eat in nature, you know? Yeah. Besides uh, those things that we see in the grocery store. Yeah. Would you be able to recognize it? Right. And recognize yeah. it too. And you got... So uh, you got a, a little chart. I got a little chart. Um, it's a decoder, so you can tell what um, whatever what you find. And you can it tells you what part of the plant to eat, if it's safe to eat, what it's used for, if it's just topical, or if you can ingest it, um, and what yeah what parts are safe, and then also um, how to regrow it as well. So that's really cute. That's that one. It's mainly for kitchen herbs, but there are a few here that, you know, definitely would find out walking around. I don't know. That's probably not long enough for anyone to read anything, but that's how you decode, like the Da Vinci yeah, code. That's, that's super <laughs> cool, though. Yeah, it's really cool. I think I, so, I found this in my mom's house. I've had it for 20 years. <laughs> oh, and it's called the Herb Decoder? Yeah. You got to say it like an oh. Aussie. You got to pronounce the H. Herb. 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 Hmm. Herb. <laughs> That's why. Well, so I, I went and I got a bunch of plants today from just around the community. And you're there uh, with plants you can kind of show us too. Yeah. Um, so a couple things that like prefacing this, as you guys have questions, make sure you guys like, like this and share. But ask your questions. Even after the show's over, Carrie will try to ask questions or answer questions. I'll try to answer questions. Um, but one of the things is I, I started posting. I don't know if you've seen this, but I posted some pictures. I started finding stuff around and eating it, taking pictures. Yeah. <laughs> and my first thing I made a mistake was I thought this was sage. Uh, it looks like sage and it smells like sage and it tastes like sage. But it's actually Western sage, which is wormwood. Yeah. So it's the stuff that you take as anti-parasitics. Um, yeah. And so I had to eat it. It just tastes like crazy, crazy amount of sage. But here's sage. That's sage. So That's it's the real like sage. almost the same kind of color there. A little bit different yeah. leaf. But Dr. Ola Burr, who is far well more versed in this than, than I am, uh, she's like, I don't think you're eating sage. <laughs> so I'd look it up. How so, did you feel when you ate the wormwood? Did it give you a tummy ache or... No, it, I mean, it tastes, no, no, it's super strong. They said it's a, uh, a digestive aid yeah. and it's aphrodisiac and it's antiparasitic. Yeah. So basically everything you need when you're hiking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially the aphrodisiac. 
<laughs> That's right. Which I gotta say, I don't think I ate enough for that effect. I don't know. Probably. So I don't know. Maybe I have to <laughs> eat on a regular basis. So I got more just in case. Yeah. See? So you gotta say crazy stuff because I'm in my office. You're out in public, so you gotta say really wild and yeah things up there. <laughs> I know. I just had all the workers come. <laughs> and then. Uh, so one of the, go so I started posting that. Yeah. And then um, one of our friends, Calvin, asked a friend of mine and said, hey, is, is Patrick okay? Like, I see him posting this thing where he's eating weeds. Yeah. Like, is he okay? <laughs> and so, again, that idea of just eating nature, eating free food. Um, I know a lot of the stuff that I prescribe to patients it grows wild in people's yards. Yeah. And so it's free which yeah. is awesome yeah so i made a couple mistakes with things but i think overall i'm doing pretty good but so then i thought well we should do a talk about this too so. yeah that's a really good idea but should we do a disclaimer just so people know they can't just go eating things that they think are things or right that can be so, it can be bad so how, do you, how do you suggest that going over going like uh how, how, how do you suggest people start with eating nature um uh, pick it oh well look for look for anything spiky if it if it doesn't look spiky you can pick it and have a smell and see what it smells like if you can recognize anything and then um if you if you've got friends with you ask them if they know what it is so ask around um and then i think there's a protocol for that isn't there something about Rubbing it yeah. on your friend's lips first in case they die, and then you know not to eat it. <laughs> yeah. But That's we'll get to like that. You, <laughs> you always want to make sure that you can run faster than your friends because you don't have to run faster than a bear or a crocodile. You just got to run faster than them. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you always you always get someone that's a little slower to go hiking with you. Yeah, they can run away. <laughs> so yeah, the, the universal edibility test is first you press it against your lips. Because they're, they're very thin skin, so if it absorbs into there, so so this stuff, I don't know what this is. I think it's dragon's head, but it's, I'm not really sure, and I haven't had time to look it up. So I would take it and rub it. Oh, I hope this doesn't react. That would be bad. Rub it against my right. lip, right? <laughs> I'll take over if you, if you die. <laughs> <laughs> the screen will move over this way, and I'm dead. <laughs> so... Um, the first thing you want to do is press it against your lips and then uh, you wait 15 minutes to see if there's a reaction. And I love Carrie's sense of humor because she said you rub it against a friend's lips, right? <laughs> and that's what I would do out in nature would be like, hey, you should try this. <laughs> so that's 15 minutes. And then you hold it against your tongue and you wait for uh, 15 minutes for a reaction. So, but you only do it after. So you wait 15 minutes after the lips. That's starting to feel a little funny. Mm. And then 15 minutes after uh, with the tongue. And then you chew a small amount, but don't swallow it. And then you wait about three minutes to see if you have reaction. And then you swallow a little bit and you wait eight hours for reaction. So it's not what I'd be. I've been doing it the wrong way, of course, but I thought I was doing the right stuff. It's just good stuff. It's wrong stuff. And then you eat a quarter of a cup and you wait eight hours for a reaction. And then if there's no reaction, most likely it's good to eat. Yeah. So that's the old school way. And it's, it's nice to have like a chart like uh, Carrie has or like a, a book. I even bought um, Stalking the Wild Asparagus. And it goes through quite a bit of things. Um, it starts with asparagus. I started with uh, uh, dandelions, but it talks a lot about that too. Yeah. Yeah, dandelions are easy to identify, so most people will know what a dandelion is, but they won't know that it's something that they can use um, in a variety of ways to help them. Yeah. Yeah. And in that book, it talks about how we went from eating plants as medicine to relying on supplements as medicine. So yeah. you can buy these, right? Yeah. Or you can just eat that all they do is grind that they took this 
well, this is personally, we'll, say, we'll look at Clover because you have something about Clover you want. But yeah. so you get Clover that you would, buy, you know, get. And if there's a four leaf one, that's pretty good. I think yeah, it's don't luckier. eat that one. Oh, no, yeah, you gotta eat, you gotta eat the four leaf ones. <laughs> make so a wish you when you take eat it. This and grind it up and make a supplement. Or you could just eat this for free. Yeah. So, so and same thing with like uh, pine needles, right? I chew those uh, when I go uh, running. I'll just grab some off a tree and kind of chew them up. And then uh, I swallow those. And purslane, so these are the ones that I found. Purslanes have that fat. Now, there's one that looks like purslane, but it's thinner. I'm not sure what that is, but I've eaten some because I mistaked it for purslane. But purslane has really thick uh, roots or stems, I guess. Yeah. And they're crunchy. Like, you can just eat these. And they just taste like kind of romaine lettuce. Yeah. They're really good. It'd be high in the water content. Right. No, yeah. and that's great for hiking. And yeah. that stuff in the U.S. grows in the sidewalks all the time. Yeah, we get that over here. I recognize that. I didn't know it was called purslane. I just used to rip it out. It used to grow amongst the rocks. I mean, unless, it's yeah. the, unless it's the little brother of the one that you've got that wasn't purslane. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure that's a good one, too. You know? It's probably fine. So then there's juniper berries, which you guys probably recognize. When I was a kid, I'd eat these off my grandma's trees. And junipers, though, uh, some are good and some are bad. So that's where you do your little provocative test. And then um, and then some of you guys, I want to, do you guys know what this is? So I find this everywhere. There's a big field of it by where I stay. And uh, like, I think that should be edible. I feel like I should be able to eat that. But I'm going to have to do the little test and see, figure that out. And then, of course, we have sage, which we showed you, sage. Sage is wonderful because when I go hiking, I take sage and, like, rub it anywhere I get uh, scratches. Oh, yeah. And it's a wonderful antibiotic and anti-inflammatory, too, which traditionally you don't think of it like that, but it's really good for that. And wormwood will do the same thing. Wormwood's good for that. So... We have a few of these things. So one of the things is um, people are kind of scared to eat nature. And I think part of it is misidentifying. Mm. And one of the things that keeps coming up is what about pesticides or dogs peeing on the stuff. But uh, Pete's sterile. It's all fine. <clears throat> Theoretically. Yeah. I'd, I'd it should die. If it gets weed on, it'll die. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, and one of the things they said in, in stalking the asparagus was um, basically looking around and seeing what's growing. If a whole bunch of wild stuff is growing everywhere, then they're probably not using pesticides. But if you notice that, you know, like there's uh, very few weeds, then you probably got to be a little bit careful of pesticides. Mm. Do, do they use quite, do, do you guys manicure your lawns there in Australia? Yeah, kind of. We, um, the rule my dad taught me growing up was if, if lots of bugs are eating it, then it hasn't been sprayed and so it's safe. But if no bugs will touch it, don't eat it. That's Unless, good. Like, yeah, some things have a really high um, natural um, repellent for bugs, like lemon myrtle. Um, tea tree, things like that. So bugs won't touch that anyway. But um, food-wise, yeah, definitely check for bugs and then that's a good thing. Right. So it's kind of like the opposite thought of like, I don't want bugs in my stuff. So yeah, yeah bugs. <laughs> and that's where like wild apples, you know, that they said that in stocking asparagus and that's kind of what I thought too growing up was basically if you see a, um, a plant or an apple that has little wormholes in it, that yeah. means it's not uh, genetically modified and not sprayed and, and it's good. So most yeah. likely that's a better thing. And in that book, uh, uh, Eating on the Wild Side, it actually talks about plants that have survived bug attacks are actually more nutritious. Mm. And so if you see where it's plant, you know, bugs have eaten the leaves or that kind of stuff, that's actually more beneficial for you. So, yeah. 
And then unknown, I, I got an app on my phone now, but I don't have service when I go hiking uh, because I've Sprint. But you can take a picture of the plant, and then it'll look through its database and then tell you what it is. Oh, that's really so, cool. Yeah. I've we've, been tinkering with that. We've got a place here up the street. It's called the Herbarium here at the Botanic Gardens in Brisbane. And if you pick a weed or something that you want identified and you can't find it anywhere, you take it in and you leave your name and your number on a piece of paper, and they'll contact you and they'll identify and um, let you know what it is. And um, up to 30 different plants, uh, new species are identified every year in, in Queensland alone, just from people bringing them in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Now, some of you guys, I know a lot of you guys that at least on our side, uh, there's a resource office for that. I don't know if they do that. Do they do that here? Do you guys know? Um, and then if you guys have questions too, feel free to post, you guys. And then there's, um, what else? Uh, not sure what to eat, not sure how to eat. Oh yeah, I'm not sure how to eat some of this. Mm. So Tara Scott, who uh, teaches yoga, she actually posted the other day, of her, she made a little salad from a bunch of weeds that she had collected. So that's, that's kind cool. of cool. You know, you're eating a salad yeah. for free instead of eight dollars for it right yeah so i just wash it off in bugs. water right yeah and if there's some bugs in there it's just extra protein it's all good that's true bear grill style <laughs> that's kiwi I like, style I like the vegetarian bear grills <laughs> kiwi style yeah. <laughs> you know what they do well, over in new zealand they go they what? have this thing they call it boil up and um it's a pot of water, uh, uh, beef bones or bacon bones, and some veggies and a whole heap of water. And then they finish it off with watercress. And um, yeah. no one buys watercress over there. You just go and you get it out of the stream. Yeah. And, yeah. And it just grows like crazy. And, yeah, so watercress. And then they put dumplings on top. And they eat this boil up and they suck all the meat off the bones. And it's like a, a New Zealand winter soup. I've never eaten it because it looks really gross, but they love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like it's going to be healthy. Yeah. Well, now Marcia asked if wormwood's in the same family as sage, and, and I'm pretty sure it is. I, I had to look that up. Um, so if you're allergic to sage, it doesn't mean you'll be allergic to wormwood, but you can be. It would just be more of kind of caution. And try it out and see what happens. There's Pam. Pam joined us. Um. So if you guys have questions, let us know. And, and um, Carrie is probably well more well knowledge in this stuff than I am because she grew up on a farm and I grew up in the, the city. So, And I've got a book. I can look things up without anyone knowing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Show the book. Okay. This is by Penny Royal. Yeah. Called Herbally Yours. I don't know if that's reversed or not. It's reversed. It's right. Oh, yeah. It's so th this one is really good. You can look up in alphabetical the the herb. It tells you all the properties of the herb. And then at the end, you can look up the ailment and it'll tell you which herb to use. So you can look up in two different ways. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, even one like I know from, because I have that book too, if you look up, I think it's PMS, I think red clover, clover is one of them. Yeah. And so, but clover is one of the things that you can eat. Clover is a funny one, isn't it? <laughs> clover yeah. grows everywhere and the bees love the clover flowers here. We get clover in spring wild all through the lawns and grasses. And if there's clover flowers, you know, not to wear, you have to wear shoes when you walk outside because the bees are going to be all over that. And you get this beautiful oh. clover honey. It's really floral. Um, and the cows love it too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We actually had um, a local dairy that has free range dairy cattle. They had complaints about three or four years ago that their milk was sour and the normal consumers of their milk started to call up and say there's something wrong with their milk. It's gone bad. It's gone bad. And they've tested it and it's gone through um, quality assurance Nothing was wrong with it. They couldn't work it out. And they, they had a look and they realized that the clover was blooming in the fields where they let the cattle eat 
natural grass. And it changed the flavour of the milk so much so that they had so many complaints they had to pull it off the shelves and they lost about $30,000 in sales. It took them oh, over two weeks to recover. Yeah. But they were trying to explain to the public when they interviewed the, the dairy farmers, they were saying, when you want free-range milk, that's what you're going to get. You know, seasonal right. flowers and seasonal clover. So get over it. <laughs> And people are so used to milk tasting one particular way. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. It's usually like bitter stuff is in uh, sour stuff is usually medicine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to our free supplements here and free food, so I want to go through some of these and I want to kind of hear from your experiences too. And especially you guys on here. What do you guys eat? Even herb-wise is fine, you know, but what are, what are the things that you guys have ventured out eating? Uh, I told you guys I eat dandelions like crazy. I don't know. People thought I was weird. Now it's it's a thing, right? So dandelion, uh, you can eat the head, which is yellow, or you can actually make wine out of it. Uh, if you milk the stem, hey, Suzanne. Um, Suzanne says howdy. You guys ever howdy. seen Howdy in Australia? Australia? How, um, yeah, you say, oh, but that's when we're pretending to be American. <laughs> oh. So we say, howdy, howdy, partner. <laughs> but right. we just say, g'day, g'day, mate. That's what we say. G'day. Yeah. <laughs> so dandelion, the whole thing, like the stem, you can even milk the stem and a little milk comes out and you put that on scratches. So like my, yeah. I have four daughters and two of them, are uh, like me, where they're just adventurous, and, and then two of them are introverts that would rather stay inside. So I've got my twins to where they'll actually take the little stem and rub it on stuff if they have little ouchies. And then the That's roots, really cool. you, you make into uh, uh, basically like a roasted coffee. So do you ever have that? Dandelion yeah, we have, tea yeah, we've got dandelion, roasted dandelion root tea that you can steep, and you have that as a coffee substitute. It's very good for the liver and right. um, very good for detoxing and cleansing. It, it, they call it a dandelion coffee, but it's really a, really like a tea, like an infusion. Right. But it, it, it's got such an earthy, dark flavor that um, it's easily replaced for um, coffee addicts like myself who need to cut down a bit. Yeah, I always thought it tastes <laughs> like coffee and tea mixed together. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, it's nice. Well, and Suzanne... Suzanne says she eats model mushrooms. I think she means so moral. Them... Moral. Oh, moral. Mushroom. I'm trying to look that yeah. up. Yeah, moral mushrooms are pretty cool. I see those growing on the Bethel Trail every now and then. But they go bad, like, fast. Like, they get real gooey and slimy real quick. Mushrooms are one that I, I don't know if I would mess with those. When I was climbing Mount Fuji, uh, we were coming down mm. the trail, and there's a beautiful mushroom that was bright red with little spot white spots. It looked amazing to me. And I was just like, that's so beautiful. And I went to grab it and they were like, don't touch that mushroom. No. It's poisonous. <laughs> so yeah. of course in nature, you don't eat the bright colors and stuff like that as much. Yeah, you gotta go for the safe foods. Yeah. Yeah. So dandelions are great. You eat dandelions ever? Yeah. I, I pull them out of my garden. Um, the slugs love dandelions, but I, I'm, I'm probably a bit lazy. <laughs> and plus I sprayed there once before and I was scared that if I ate it, it had old spray. But um, I eat, when we go to a raw cafe up the road, they always garnish the salads with these gorgeous flowers, edible flowers. And um, my kids push them to the side and I grab them and I eat, I eat all theirs. Yeah, I was surprised about the amount of flowers, like beautiful flowers that are all edible. I yeah. used to eat rose petals. I'm pretty sure you yep. can eat rose petals. Yeah. Yes. And they can. actually make rose water, I guess. Yeah, which is yeah. just deep boiled rose petals. Yeah, Dr. Ola, I gotta, uh, she's leaving. I think I can't remember where she's going, but she makes the most interesting kombucha mixes. I make very standard ones, but she like uses flowers to make them, and like it's amazing. Oh, the other thing about dandelions is the green. So it's really funny in America. 
uh, they sell dandelion greens. Yeah. So the weeds are now expensive greens in the health food store. <laughs> it's like selling Bottle bottled that. water. This water is free <laughs> everywhere, but being at six dollar <laughs> Evian water. Let's see if I can find some dandelions. Come for a walk with me. All right. There's some marigolds and some yeah, strawberries. Yeah, marigolds you can eat. Yeah. I'll have a look around. So I'm pretty sure I ate marigolds when I was a kid, too. Because my, my dad would grow a lot of those. And Suzanne says if you put mushrooms in a paper sack in the fridge, they'll last forever. So that's pretty good so it doesn't go moldy. I never do that. I always leave them open and then we eat about half of them and then they get a little slimy and then I'm out. I'm done with it. <laughs> slimy mushrooms. Nope. <laughs> And then purslane, we talked about that, but purslane, I love it. It tastes just like uh, romaine lettuce to me. Oh, this is my sister talking. Sorry. What is that? Diana's asking a question. That's my sister. Oh. Yeah, so Diana's asking you. She (laughs) says, tell him about Rachel eating snails. Hmm. I don't remember that story. (laughs) Were you eating slugs and snails? Yeah. We, used to, they have, we were starving. We lived on a farm. We had to just eat what was there. <laughs> is that right? Well, did you cook them, though? Because I heard they uh, have parasites that will mess you up. Oh, yeah. She might have accidentally ate a snail. It might have been an accident. I can't imagine her actually wanting to eat a snail. Look what I just found oh. now. I don't know if you can see what? it. This is called, can you see that? Toothache plant. Yeah, that. that's cool. Should I put some on my on my tooth? Yeah. All right. I you hope it's this one. Out of there. <laughs> I rub it on my lips. <laughs> I think it's okay. I'll try the leaf. So toothache, what? Toothache plant. This thing. It's with some parsley and Oh that's a really interesting one. Um we've got fennel. Fennel's really good. That grows in wet areas. That's fennel's good for digestion. You'd find that in the wild here. Tastes like aniseed. Oh. Yeah. So fenugreek tastes like maple syrup but fennel that's great it tastes like uh anise or or licorice yeah so the other name for that toothache plant is szechuan buttons (laughs) (laughs) szechuan oh it sounds like chinese takeout um i found some sage i don't know can you see where is my hand just there this tiny one here yeah um so the yeah. That looks like uh, the one that you just touched. That looks like the wormwood ones. This one. Um, yeah, what are those? No, doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't have a label. Hang on. Oh, you should definitely eat it. Oh, you are as bad as I am. Oh, that tastes really good. But guess what this is? What? Chicory. Is that the same chicory that you think? No, so our chicory doesn't look like that at all. Oh, this is sorrel. Yeah, sorrel's a very edible plant, too. Yeah. So sorrel's an edible weed. Mmm. That looks really good. Oh, this one was very bitter. It's just coming through now. Really bitter. Ugh. Which one? The one that you ate? (laughs) The one that you thought was wormwood. Oh, yeah. Well, no, wormwood's very potent. So that toothache yeah, like plant, that. <laughs> you take the, uh, rub the leaf on your gums if you have a toothache, and it'll numb it. So they use it All for right. sore gums, teething babies, and ulcers. So it must have an anesthetic property. Yeah, much like clove. Clove you can do that with, too. Yeah. And That's then your awesome. cat's tail is really good. That's one of those ones that the, the bottom is a tuber, like a potato you can eat. 
And cat's tails oh. grow like crazy near the water here. But you can also eat the top like a corn dog. <laughs> the actual <laughs> tail part. And then the leaves are like spinach. And a lot of those that taste bitter, they always recommend boiling them or parboiling or uh, sauteing them a little bit. And that takes that bitterness out of them. Yeah. And my, my, um, one of my patients, her husband actually grows all these weeds like a garden. And then he had uh, some caretakers come over to do their lawn. And, and uh, they cut down all the weeds that they were growing in their, uh, in their garden. <laughs> so that was nice. I like the little kid that went to school and told her teacher that daddy was growing weed. <laughs> and then um, there was lots of weed in the garden, but she did, wasn't adding the S to the end. <laughs> and she, the teacher called and I sent a, little, a letter home and he had to, and then he said to his little girl, show, show the weed that you're talking about to your teacher. And she just points to like little weeds in the grass. <laughs> oh, how funny. They got in big trouble. Yeah. Well, what about... So chicory has these little purple flowers. They're usually little, I don't even know how to describe plants, but chicory is one of the things that my, my daughters, when we go on walks, they'll identify chicory and eat it. And so they eat dandelion. They will stop and we'll just eat weeds as we find them, which is funny. <laughs> but they're, they love chickweed and chicory. It's two yeah. that they eat all the time. I'm going to have to start getting them to eat clovers. And then broadleaf plantains. I was tr I was hoping I'd find a broadleaf plantain near my office. Yeah. But it's funny. The research came out on that, or something on Facebook came out with that and said how it's super nutritious and it's so full of vitamins and minerals, all this kind of stuff, and you should feed it to your rabbits. But you could eat it. And I started, we had chickens at the time, and we had a couple rabbits. And I started looking around the ground, and I was just like, our whole yard is covered in these broadleaf plantains. And so I was like, well, screw that. So I just, and we don't use chemicals in ours. We're, nobody likes us in the neighborhood because of that. But um, but I would just sit there and eat that stuff while I was out in the yard working on stuff. <laughs> so bro broadleaf plantains, they're super, they have like broad rounding leaves and then they have these little spindles uh, that grow up. Uh, but they're s really easy to identify and really uh, super healthy. And all those wild varieties of plants and weeds that we eat are, like, actually supersized in, in nutrition. Like, tons of vitamins and minerals and nutrients um, and bioflavonoids and, and uh, phyto, phytonutrients because they're wild and they have to survive. Mm. And so uh, where we cultivate them, and you might brought, buy, like, uh, dandelion greens, they are not as nutritious as what, you, what occurs in wild, uh, wild nature. So... Let's see, Deanna Francis says, does he have dad's book? Uh, now, normally dad wrote a book topic, on nutrition. But she's talking to you. <laughs> Don't ask personal How questions. How do you know my dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Oh, she Deanna. says, yeah. clinical perils clinical for health. better health. It's just um, like, yeah, just pretty much what you do in practice um it's like an a to z of um i think it goes by the ailment and then the natural things you can eat or do to fix it making poultice um that kind of stuff yeah now is that your dad's book yeah you can get that on amazon still yeah, on dr print. don Nadal. yeah well, why didn't you use his book you didn't even well, bring your I, daddy's book. I lent it to someone and then I moved state and I never got it back. Oh, how funny. Yeah. I have to buy another copy now. He doesn't give them out for free. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, here, family, I'll give you a discount. 10%. Yeah, you get the first one for free and then everything <laughs> else you got to buy. <laughs> what about kudzu? Do you, do you guys have kudzu there? Kudzu, that's, yeah, you know, that sounds really familiar. It's like this gonna... uh, really invasive vine that grows all over. So, like, in the south, it makes things look like it's Vietnam kind of looking. 
where you just have all these vines growing all over everything. And I actually prescribe that for patients every now and then for the thyroid, but it's like yeah. growing everywhere. It's one of the most uh, easy things to cultivate too. What about yarrow? Do you ever do yarrow? Um, I haven't found yarrow in the wild yet, but it's yarrow is meant to be excellent. We can get it in a capsule form. Look what they've got in here. Broccoli. Oh, you should eat that broccoli. I should. I'm totally going to have that for lunch. <laughs> take just lean me. over like you're looking at it and, and just take a bite out. I wonder what this is. Can you see this one? It's got a purple flower. Huh. Should you I eat it? Yeah. Let's check. No stinging nettles. Once I thought I had some mint and I picked it. Yeah. And then I put it on my tongue and it was so sharp. And I realized it was stinging nettle. <laughs> and it was not mint. Oh, yeah. That tastes good. It tastes like something familiar. But I can't work it out. If I ever go to Australia, we're going to go for a hike and probably one of us will just eat and one of us will either uh, will be super healthy or one of us will die. <laughs> I'll be the designated driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, and yarrow is pretty easy to identify too. Can you see that? What is that? Oh, that's, the crest? Yeah, that's the crest. So that's the yeah. one they put in the boil up. It's a bit dry here because it's different from watercress, but definitely you could get that in the wild. Yeah, I was hiking with my friend, uh, Frank Shevchak. He's a doctor down in Arkansas now. And uh, we were we were on the um, Katy Trail. Yeah. And we, we were just dicking around and we found like huge patch of watercress. And so we just sat there for a long time and just sat there and ate all this watercress. <laughs> And then I found it in the store, and I was like, oh, I'm going to get watercress for my salad. And then it was like, I don't know, 4 or $5. <laughs> I was like, well, that's bull crap because this stuff is free at the creek. I know. You don't see anyone buying watercress over this way. Hang on. I'm making my tripod down so I, I can just sit here a bit. Now, what about <laughs> – you were talking about blessed thistle or milk thistle? Milk thistle. The oh, one with the spikes it. on it. Um, stinging nettle. Oh, that stinging, stinging nettle. Okay. Nettle. Nettle's useful, but you you got to boil that one and make it really soft. And you can put it in tea. What's nettle good for, Dr. G? <laughs> that's a good question. I'm going to look at Stinging up. nettle, that's one of the ones that I prescribe every now and then, but um, I wanted to say liver. But let's see here. So it's been used for 100 years for muscle pain, eczema, arthritis, gout, anemia, urinary problems, and benign prosthetic hypertrophy. I must use it more probably for pain than anything with patients. Mm. But it's not my go-to one. But yeah, stinging nettle is one that grows for free. Um, but yeah, so you have to you have to boil that one. Um, yeah, you, you, it's hard to put that one in salads because it hurts when you eat it, <laughs> and yeah. it hurts when you pick it. It's very tiny. Once they're in your skin, you can't see them anymore, and you kind of have to brush them off. Um, Monique yeah. says nettle's great for asthma. She's Monique's a naturopath. She's my friend in oh, Sydney. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> And Dana says uh, she rubs, I think it's the basil oil on her uh, husband's legs. All over. All over his leg here. And we heard basil yeah. was a good insect repellent. Oh, yeah, basil. We call basil. 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 <laughs> well, and yeah, and basil's a great antibiotic too. So just like oregano and thyme. But I never see basil or basil out in the wild, though. That would be awesome. 
So if you're in the wild, if you had bleeding or a cut, I think nettle would help with bleeding. It might help yeah. with hemorrhage. So it would um, clot, maybe. Help with clot? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> well, what about milk thistle? Do you guys have milk thistle there? So, yeah, milk thistle, they use it here traditionally for mothers to um, lack the lactation and milk production. Yeah. It's, it's an old one here. We get that um, in a capsule in a health food store, but I don't know if we would be able to identify it walking around. Yeah, it's pretty unique. And, and that's one of those things that grows wild here. So, yeah, milk thistle, typically I always use it for liver detox. Um, so people have fatty liver disease here. We use it for that. But, oh, I'm um, thinking but blessed yeah. thistle. Blessed thistle is the mother's milk one. Yeah. Milk Ooh, thistle. thistle. Milk thistle. Um, oh, we get heaps of milk thistle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Milk thistle. Do you get tons of that? Yeah, it has like a purple flower. Yeah. Like a purple head, and then it's really spiky. Yeah. Yeah. So that grows crazy in paddocks, and the cattle can't eat it, and the farmers are constantly clearing it because um, it's, <laughs> it's really, medicine. yeah, it's, it's noxious, noxious weed. <laughs> so you just cut all that down and sell it. <laughs> yeah. I'll take care of all that for you. Yeah, you definitely need a spade or a shovel and gloves for that one. You can't, sometimes get that in the backyard. It grows pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah well, you know, I, I, go ahead. Sorry, go. I was going to say milk thistle is that like if you snap the stem, the milk will come out through the stem, but it kind of looks yeah. like dandelion, but not a yellow flower. And it's more spiky and harsh. Yeah. 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 There was a few on that list of, uh, I looked at a bunch of edible plants to go look for. And there was a few of them that were crazy spiky. Like I wouldn't mess with those <laughs> at all. Look what I've got. Here. Oh, I'll show you my little friend. Oh, I think. I just found this guy. Here we go. Crikey. Ready? Let's see if I can flip. Tell me when you see it. I'll point to it. What is that? Oh, you see it? spider. Yeah. Yeah, what you is look that? What look what he's growing on. Rosemary. Oh, rosemary. And they've got the rosemary yeah, so here near the barbecue. Yeah. And this, so you can make a, um, like a skewer to stab your kebab with. <laughs> what? You could put the spider on the rosemary spike and then eat it. <laughs> Lots of protein and vitamins and uh, minerals, yeah. right? That spider's keeping the flies away from the barbecue area. So you've got to let that spider. That's a green garden or both things. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. There was a, uh, what about curly dog? Curly dog. Do you guys have that? We, curly dog. Ugh, I don't even know that one so curly dog so that's one i i think i post on facebook i'm trying to figure out what if that's what that is but there's a whole bunch of it growing my uh, i either thought it was amaranth like in the beginning or it was curly dock but i bet you it's curly dock but there's a whole field of it next to my uh place and i want to go that's one of those things that i found that i'm like i bet i can eat that thing so <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be the next experiment. Because I'm going to try to see if I can figure out if that's curly duck. Because that photo, the herb photo identifier app that I have on my phone, that's what it called it. So, and that's a good ah, edible one. Yeah. Yep. And it's ri rich in vitamin A and B and it's used uh, to help urinary tract infections and overall health. And it looks pretty appetizing. And curly duck, you just. Uh, you can eat it raw or you can, if it's a little bit bitter, you can boil it just like the rest of those. Yeah. So, 
my goal this last weekend was to take my girls and go, um, or two weekends ago, was to go and find a bunch of like uh, edible foods. But instead, we found a bunch of minnows and snakes and a little baby <laughs> catfish, and they were just more interested in that. But then we took <laughs> the minnows and we I cooked it with a uh, an iron skillet with um, pear cranberry uh, infused oil, and it was actually pretty amazing. It tasted great. So my that daughter said good. it tasted the minnow tasted like a potato. I don't know. I tasted it. I posted that video. But it, it did. It tastes really good. <laughs> and minnows are cheap too, right? They're all free. What's a minnow? A minnow? <laughs> it, it's like a little tiny fish. Yeah. Oh, like a sardine or a whiting or something? Yeah, kind of. It, it's what most people use to put on a hook to catch bigger fish. Oh, we call that white bait. White bait, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I gotcha. That's good. It tastes like so potatoes. What the... <laughs> right. Yeah. I was, I was very surprised. And you don't have to cook them. You can just eat those raw. But you want to make sure it's in a good place. We weren't in a good place. We were in a park, but the park came from a housing development. And so we tried one each yeah. just to try it. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. What about prickly pear cactus? Have you ever eaten that? Um, so I lived in a town called Griffith here in New South Wales, the next state down, and it's flooded with a lot of Italians. They call it Little Italy, uh, lots of mafia. Oh, that's a long story. Anyway, there's a juice bar there run by a lovely Italian family right next door to the health food store where I used to work. And I used to grab a juice every day at lunch. And then suddenly they had these prickly pears in the window and I didn't know what they were. And they told me it was prickly pear from the cactus, the fruit that grows that red fruit that pokes out of the big flat leaf. And right. they're normally really spiky. And um, I said, well, what do you do with that? And she said, oh, we pop it in the juicer. And I said, well, can you add it to my juice? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, what's it good for? And she said, it's really good for female health. And that's where she left it. And she said, in Italy, we eat them all the time. Really good for women. Um, so she put it in my juice. And I was really, um, um, what's the word where it's got lots of high water content. Yeah. So I don't know. It didn't make it taste that different. It was really sweet. Kind of like, um, kind of like sweet aloe vera. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. But well, that's hard to good. eat that otherwise. Well, I, I see them every now and then when I go hiking. And I've always wanted to eat them. But the other day I saw some in the store. And um, I thought, I'm going to get some just so for me and the girls to try. Yeah. And I'm sitting there holding it and holding it and messing around with it. And then all of a sudden my fingers are filled with all those little tiny spikes. Yeah. And I was like, God dang it. And it took me like a week before I finally got those things all out. But yeah. I was like, well, that's just ridiculous. I'm not getting none in my throat or mouth or... So I was like, I, I think you're supposed to burn them off or something. I don't know, but I was what like, the lady okay, so in the juice in the bar wild. did, she just um, got the knife and peeled it like a potato and took all the oh, skin okay. off and juiced the inside bit. She didn't juice the roughage on the outside. Oh, okay. Is that a magpie? That That's a cockatoo. Like That's a cockatoo? Cockatoo. Oh, they're on the other side now. If another one comes back, I'll flip the camera for you. Do you want to see the bird they've got to scare off all the crows? These are the ones that scare the crows. So this is what we need in America is we have lots of pigeons and crows. Oh, the owl. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a statue, though. I don't think it's working. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. The birds here are smart. <laughs> so... What were you going to say? The last couple things maybe is, um, so make sure you guys get a book about this or like a guard, a guide like Carrie has. Um, I started reading that stalking the wild asparagus, which is a good start. I was very surprised that I thought it didn't have a lot of stuff in there. And I thought this is just ridiculous, but the more I got into, it, I really enjoyed it. And one of the things is this guy was going fishing and he said that he, uh, noticed there was some asparagus growing in the wild. So he started eating those and then he started 
get more. And then he noticed what it looked like. And very quickly, he noticed he saw those everywhere. And so then that became his passion of like, oh, my God, this stuff's everywhere. It's all free and it's so delicious. And then he's like, well, what else do, do I, can I find? And then it kind of built from there. But one of the really cool things that he did was he eventually got together with other people that do this or kind of were interested. And they would have these wild uh, edible parties. <laughs> and so everybody was responsible for bringing something that they found out in the wild. And they basically made it just like fantastic five-star kind of food. Like what they're doing is half the stuff they're like, and that a cup of sugar. And it's like, well, that's not what I'm talking about. But I thought it'd be really fun to, to kind of get a few people and start maybe like twice a year, have like little edible parties. I think that would be interesting. Yeah, and you have to find a really you... good area where they've got a lot of, um, where there's a lot of that. I know. Yeah, because here there's a lot. I mean, I, I'm, a lot of this stuff I just found around the office, like around the office building, which is pretty amazing. That's awesome. You know, let alone just go to the botanic and fill it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and let's see, you talked about the things to avoid. We talked about a few of these. I'm going to post a few websites where they have the edible plants on there so you guys can start looking at those. And what I want yep. you guys to do is post pictures of you eating wild plants that you're supposed to, not the bad stuff. Um, what's the one uh, What's the one that looks like uh, parsley or or uh, carrot tops? It's um, oh, yeah, oh, we... hemlock. Hemlock. Don't eat the hemlock. No, and I think that grows like a little bindi. Or um, like a sharp thing that when it dries, it gets stuck in your foot. Oh. Yeah. It looks like carrots. Yeah. Yeah. So we found some along a trail, like the Bethel Trail. They, there's uh, all kinds of, I think somebody goes and spreads seeds along the trail. Um, <laughs> and so there's all these little wild carrots growing everywhere. And so me and the girls dig out the little tiny carrots and we'll eat them off the trail. So, That's but there cool. was me and... Um, a friend went hiking there the other day, and there was some more edible things that I found. So, but I think, but those are not wild edibles. They're, I think, people throwing seeds on the ground as they hike to just grow stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but if you guys can post those, and then uh, I won't be so weird posting all my stuff either. So, and Deanna says, uh, what about the bush tucker? Yeah. Oh, the witchetty grubs. So that's, the grubs. they're found in wood in the, in a, this is what the Aborigines eat. They throw them on the hot coals and cook them. Um, yeah. Well, you can have it raw and they come out like that big, big fat round grubs and they're white. And um, on our farm, when we were little, we used to go and chop the wood for the fire. And sometimes we'd split a stump and inside it would be all these tunnels that they've eaten in the wood. And then they've grown like these big grubs. I don't know what they turn into. I think they stay grubs. I don't know if they're a beetle or, or a moth or something. Um, but you, you eat that and it tastes like peanut butter. Oh, my God. <laughs> peanut butter grubs? Yeah. You could get some wild like cranberries or berries out there. And then you could mix that together with the grub and have like a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. Yes, you could. In a lettuce okay, wrap. Okay, so I would totally, I, I would definitely eat one of those. I want to eat some grubs sometime. I want to do like a surviving out in nature thing just to eat some of those things. But if it tastes like peanut butter, that'd be awesome. Dr. G versus wild. <laughs> Dr. G versus wild. That'd be good. Yeah. Well... <laughs> So uh, as we wrap things up, any what, what are your clo closing thoughts? Um, my closing thoughts are to, like, be observant. Hey, be observant and um, don't be afraid if you look weird walking around eating something. Um, and be uh, curious and go and find out what's in your area. And ask the, uh, the older people in your neighborhood and in your community if they know 
um, of anything around because they normally have all that knowledge. So um, that's really quite good. And, yeah, don't be afraid to try stuff and don't be afraid to um, go and research and find out what something is. And, um, yeah. Hi, John. <laughs> yeah. I think that's Those clovers they're my, they're taste my like best candy. Time. Candy. Did you eat the leaf? I ate the whole thing. Yeah. I think the stems have a really strong flavor, but it's like, uh, it tastes like candy. Yeah. So that's what the that's bees, really good. bees like clover. And the honey is so sweet. It's just beautiful honey that they make from the flowers, the pollen of the clover flower. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. This was awesome. <laughs> so, um, and you were like, this is our first on location, yeah. right? Yeah. And international. That's super cool. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah. I just kind of take you. Oh, I've got so many people here. The park's really picking up. It's this beautiful lake. No crocodiles came yeah. out of that, so I was pretty lucky today. I got away without being eaten. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no crocs. No, no salties. No salties. This yeah. is this is sweet potato. That's pretty cool. And here's some lemon trees. Oh, nice. Yeah, there's lots of stuff here, but half of it's not labeled, so I'll never really know what it is unless I taste it. But. Um, what happens if I eat one of these? <laughs> See, you got the same <laughs> attitude I have. <laughs> the red ones or the one green of ones? Us, they're gonna, they're, everybody's going to be betting which one of us gets sick. I'm sitting there eating stuff that I found around the neighborhood. And then uh, you're eating stuff from the, the uh, Botanica. So we'll see. I know. All right, I, well, my I neighborhood to, was what? boring. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for joining us. And I want to thank all you guys too. Um, feel free to, to post more questions for us. Um, and if you guys have found stuff that you're eating that's in the wild, make sure to post those. Uh, you can post them on my feed too. I think that'd be awesome. So then I'm not the weirdo in the neighborhood anymore. Yeah. All right. You won't be the only well, one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, same thing. Closing thoughts are just, you know, get a book and, and kind of look some of these things up and just start with what you know and then try to add another one. So start with dandelions. Yeah. So Dandelions. All right. well, let's put a photo of dandelions up here too. What is that? Get a photo of dandelions up in the comments for them. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case. And then, and then next week I want to talk about uh, eating on the wild side. And really how to maximize nutrition by changing how you pick food and prepare food. So um, uh, we'll talk about Joe Robinson's book. And, and, you know, it's astronomically different nutrition versus a white potato versus yellow potato versus purple potato. And so we want to talk about how we can change little bits of things in our food to dramatically increase the nutrition uh, to reverse disease too and prevent. So thank you, guys. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to end with me eating some purslane here. All right. That was parsley. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.